God in Jesus' name. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. You are the one and only living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is simply no one like you, Lord. Amen. You are the, the first and the last, Lord. When you created everything and everyone, you had us sitting here tonight in mind, Lord. You've got a plan for us, Father God. And what we confess tonight is, Lord, we are seeking that plan. No other plan, Lord. We, we don't want a plan from a government or an organization or an institution or, or, or we, we, we want your plan, Lord. We want the blueprint that you designed for our lives tonight, Lord, to be imprinted into our spirits by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, that in a blink of an eye, we, we may see like, like our brother John in Revelation saw what you had in mind for the end of the earth, Lord. Blink of an eye, Father, may you show us what you have in mind for us, Lord. Thank you for that, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your word will be buried deep in our hearts tonight, Lord. So deep that we, as humans, can never find that seed to uproot it, Lord. But then it will start to grow. And grow in something so big that it will overtake us. That it will overcome every sin in our lives, Lord. Amen. That it will defeat the enemy every time he tries to convince us that we are defeated, Lord. So I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that right now we will completely dissolve away, Lord. And that your word will be illuminated. And will stand up and will arise in our midst, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Family. Um, my wife and, and, and myself, we have had the privilege in, in our walk together to... Be able to start three, I think, if I'm correct, three churches um, from the one church was one soul, the second church was three, and the third was round about there as well. I cannot describe to anyone in any words the feeling that, that the Lord gives you as a man or woman of God when you are building and raising a church. And you see it grow before you. And you see the members start to realize what they have on this earth and who we are. And so I'm standing here tonight about to read one of the most powerful letters written to a church. And, and as I'm reading this letter, this week, it, it, it speaks to my heart and my spirit because I know what Paul was saying here. Family, this church that I'm standing before this evening, and you can go behind my back and ask my wife, I'm sure she will say the same thing. Other than Jesus, the Son of God, my family, this church is my life. This church is my baby. I nourish this church with everything that I have. The gifts that the Spirit of God has given me that are not mine, that's His, that I am using. I'm a steward of those gifts. I use it to, to, to cherish what the Lord has given me. And family, if you are sitting here tonight and you love the Lord, and you understand that the Word of God teaches us that we are individually temples of the Holy Spirit, but together yes. we are the church. Amen. And if you get that tonight, then you will know 
That family, this is something that you should cherish. Yes. This is something that you should love with everything inside of you. Because in a blink okay. of an eye, by the will of God, it can be taken away from us. I know that because my beautiful wife and myself, we apostled, we built three churches from nothing to a vast amount of people. And the churches we were serving in at that time just came and took the church from us. And so I know that feeling of raising a, a child and losing the child. Do you know what I mean? And I love this church so much, family, that I pour my whole life into it. There's my wife. She knows. If there's, there's two places that she finds me if she's looking for me. Three places that she finds me if she's looking for me. The woodshed, she finds me here, or she finds me in the prayer room. And family, I have invested my whole life into walking this journey with you. And I'm excited about it. And I, I devote everything of my life to it. So much so that I'm going to say this. This is our birthday box for, for, for the visitors that are here. So in this birthday box, there's, there's goodies, chocolates, and, and, and a few toys and, and things for if there's, if there's kiddies. Um, and you know, family, I love you so much. So much so that every time somebody fills this box up with new chocolates, I test them to see if they're safe. <laughs> Selflessly, I do that for you. We love you. Family. wait for brother Luke to come back and for him to forget his phone on again. <laughs> yeah. Did we taste that chocolate best. cake that he oh, baked? Yeah. That was Shana now that. <laughs> Family, I, I want to read this letter to you tonight and show a few things that the Lord wants to point out to us as us that's building this beautiful church of ours. Amen? This, this, and when I say this church, I don't mean Altham Baptist Church. I mean the body of yes, Christ. Amen. We are three, if not four, churches together here tonight. But we are the body. Amen. 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 And family, I said this to someone during the week, and I want to get it out there, and I want to say it tonight. <laughs> if I have to, I will violently defend my church. I will. If I have to. Because the Word of God teaches me that even in churches there are people sitting to deceive us. Yes. And family, if we don't read this Word and we don't study it and we don't know about these things that the previous brothers and sisters and apostles and disciples, teachers, preachers, prophets taught us, we are going to be caught of God and they will split our churches in half. Yes. And I'm putting it out there tonight that the Lord is so good. You know, I, I, I loathe wearing these masks. But I do it yes. because I don't want to be pointed at and said the church doesn't want to listen. Yes. But you know, family, there's one good thing about these masks. That in this week that passed, I was standing in Mitre 10 behind someone and I didn't know I was there. Someone that sits in this church. And the language that they used there put me on high alert. Amen? To watch my church even more. Family, we must be careful. If someone comes to you and tries to sell themselves to you, Amen? I am nothing. Amen? Without Christ, I am nothing. So whenever someone comes to you and says, I have this gift and I have that gift, that is when we must go, whoop, whoop, high alert. Amen? Amen. And so this, this letter that we're going to read tonight, we're going to start off with 2 
Timothy, please, uh, Brother Brian. Second Timothy. This is our brother Paul. He is writing to, to, to Timothy. Timothy is a young evangelist and a, and a, and a preacher, and he's just established a, a church, and Paul is now raising him up in the ways of the word. Amen? Not in the ways of Paul. He's raising him up in the ways of the word. To run this church for Christ, not to run it for Paul, to run it for Christ. And listen to what he says. I'm sorry, Brother Brian. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Chapter 2, we are going to be reading from verse 14. Verse 14. Listen what he starts with. He says, keep reminding God's people of these things that we're going to read now. He doesn't say, say it to them once. He says, keep reminding them so that we do not forget, family. He goes further and he says, warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and ruins those who listen. Amen? So warn each other about quarreling. Warn. The Bible says warn. It doesn't say shame, is it? No, it says warn. If you find a brother or sister that is causing quarreling, warn them. Amen? Amen. Family, our world is in the state that it's in because churches and Christians have been tolerant of sin. We've unfortunately allowed this world to get to a point where it is. And as one of my sisters this morning said, now it's up to us to try and fix it. And man, is it going to be a job. And so warn them against quarreling. That's the first one. Here's number two, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Did we hear that clearly, family? Do your best to present yourself to God. Stop trying to present yourself to people. You're wasting your time. They're not looking for your mold. They're looking for something else. And this word says, it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. The question coming to my spirit now is, I stand before my Father and I say, Father God, do you approve of me? Not people of Altham, do you approve of me? That's going to be a solid no. Amen? Amen. But to stand and say, Father, do you, who created me by speaking me into being, you knew me before I was even knit together in my mother's womb. You had a plan and a purpose for me as I'm standing here tonight. Do you approve of me? And if the answer is no, family, then we must go and we must do what Jesus said. Go into our prayer rooms, close the door, lock it, and pray to our Father who is unseen. And our Father who is unseen will hear our prayers. Amen? So, family... Number two, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. This is Paul speaking to the church family. He's not speaking to the world. Yes. The world doesn't care what people yes. think about them. Yes, yes. If they are drunk, they are drunk. Yes. If, if, if they sleep around, they sleep around. The world doesn't care. We do amen. because we carry a different name. Yes, amen. I don't walk on this earth for my name. Yes. I walk on this earth for the name of Jesus. And so, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Amen? Second question I can ask myself, Jacques Fouchet, do you correctly handle the word of God? Because I didn't write this word. So I can't go and change it like I want to. Am I correctly handling this word? Then the Bible goes on. Here's number three, verse 16. Avoid godless 
chatter. You just need to use those words. Avoid godless chatter. Oh, Brother Wayne, did you hear that they found um, COVID traces in the wastewater in, in Stratford? We are done for! Godless chatter. Amen? What's Brother Wayne going to say to me? Hey, my friend, I, I don't know what COVID is, but I do know what God is. Amen. And I do know he's in control. Amen? Avoid godless chatter. Family, like I as a married pastor, turn and flee from women that try and do things they're not supposed to do. I am saying to you as the church tonight, flee from godless chatter. Run away from it. It's only going to bring you down. The word says so. Listen what it says further. Verse 16, avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Amen? Have you ever indulged in a chocolate cake? <laughs> you become more and more yummy. Amen? But after a while. Yeah. And so, listen what the word says. The more you indulge, the more you eat, of the filth of this godless chatter, the more you will become like that. That's number three. It goes on. Verse 17. Their teachings will spread like gangrene among them, and he names guys that were in the church that aren't in the church anymore. Verse 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed, with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are His and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Amen. It's not a suggestion. It's a stop street. It's a law. Amen? Turn away from it. Verse 20. We're getting to point number four. In a large house, there's many articles, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes. And some are for common use. Here's number four. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes. Family, have we been cleansed? It's questions that we ask ourselves as the church tonight. Have we been cleansed? Are, are, are we um, instruments of special purpose tonight? Or, or, or am I an instrument for my purpose? Am I in this to see what I can gain out of it? So, instruments of um, special purpose. Made holy. Now, these next words we must concentrate on. Useful to the master. Family, the question that I'm asking myself is, Standing here tonight before you as a man of God, am I useful to Christ or am I useless? There's only one of two ways. You can't be in between. Am I useful in his kingdom? Am I doing exactly what Jesus wants me to do the way he wants me to do it, when he wants me to do it? Or do I sit and I choose the time and how and, and the... I mean... These are questions that we must ask ourselves. And we must focus on it. So useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. So that's number four. Number five, verse 22. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. He has two opposing powers here. Okay? So it says, flee from evil desires. Flee, family. I, I was in a situation once where I got out of a car with four of my friends. And there was a car in the middle of the night, 20 meters in front of us. A guy jumped out of the car with a 9 millimeter Glock and emptied that clip on us. We didn't stand there. We also didn't walk. We didn't run. We fled. And when I say flee, 
I was running not only on my, my feet, I was using my hands, my shoulders were involved, my ears somewhere along the line hit that, but I was fleeing. Amen? Yeah, yeah. To flee something is to violently run away yeah. from something or someone. Amen. Flee from the evil desires of your, of your youth. But listen what it says here further. It says, pursue righteousness. Do you know what pursue is, family? It's to seek something without stopping until you find it. Amen. Until you find it. When I first came to salvation, I said to the Lord, I, I can't say stuff to the Lord. I prayed and I, 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 I prayed and I said, Father, I will die trying to see your son face to face. That's it. I will chase him the rest of my life until I can see him. Because there's simply nothing else on the face of this planet that is worth pursuing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh-huh. And family, I can thankfully stand here tonight and say, I have seen Christ face to face because I have pursued Him. Thank you. Him. And nothing and no one else. So pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Verse 23, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. Amen? Foolish and stupid arguments. Jesus was crucified on a cross. He wasn't. He was crucified on a tree. No, he wasn't. It was a cross. Family, our Lord was crucified. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He died and he rose again. Thank you, Lord. Amen? So the Bible says here, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. It's seeds that we are sowing, family. You sow those seeds, you water them, what does it produce? Quarrel. It's a fruit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then, goes further, verse 24. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, and able to teach, not resentful. Verse 25. Opponents must be gently instructed in a hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap the devil has set for them. Okay? Here's the next one. Number six. We're going to chapter three now, verse one. But mark this, okay, so Paul says, okay, we must be alert now, I'm going to tell you something that you must listen to, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, family, you know when Jesus says something's going to be terrible, we must get ready, amen, we must get ready, when the Lord says there's terrible times, you know, my family and I, we once lived in, in an apartment that is double the size of this stage. There's my wife. She can say yes or no. Okay? For two and a half years, we did not have hot running water. I built my family a one meter by one meter bath out of cement. And we used to bath at night, every night for two and a half years with a kettle. 17 kettles to bath five people. Family, I can tell you that was terrible. That was terrible. But we did it because we were building God's kingdom. So to us as humans, that's terrible. But when Jesus says in the last days, it's going to be terrible times. Family, we must be prepared. Because if we not, and when I say prepared, we, I've been saying this, and it's because the Lord has been placing it in my spirit. We must stand up and grow a disciple backbone. We must become courageous family. Because if we not, this world is going to walk in one day and they're just going to take what they want. And when I say what they want, I mean your life. So the Bible says, mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. 
People will be lovers of themselves. Yes. When last did you walk in town in a bookstore? When last did you look at magazine covers? It's displaying people. Amen? Yes. And their wealth and their success. People will be lovers of themselves. Instagram, follow me. Amen? Facebook, let, follow me. Give, let's see how many friends I can get on Facebook. Family, people will be lovers of themselves. Why do you think this world invented selfies? Mm -hmm. Huh? So that you don't have to wait that other people takes a picture of you. <laughs> you can do it all day. People will be lovers of themselves. It goes further. Lovers of money. Listen, yeah, what Paul says 2,000 years ago, family. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I'm sorry I can't go to church on Sunday. I must go and watch the rugby. Pleasure. I'm sorry I bought a new jet ski. And the, the, the lake is only open on Sundays. No other day in the week. So I'm sorry. Pleasure. Family. Look here. Paul prophesied this. It goes further. Verse 5. Listen what he says these people look like. He's painting a picture for us. They have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. Amen? They walk among us, family, proclaiming that they are sons and daughters yeah. of God. They've got the, the correct form. They walk with the right clothes. They talk with the right talk. Amen? Then you find them in town. They are screaming and shouting at people. And they are stealing from other businesses. And it's just rough. Family. Is a, they've got a, a form of godliness, but they deny its power. Now listen what Paul teaches us to do with people like that. Have nothing to do with such people. A warning. Have nothing to do with them. Family, if we tolerate this, this will split us. That's it. It will split us. Almost done. Verse 6. They are the kind who worm themselves. Or they are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control of gullible women who are lauded down with sin and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning but never able to become to the knowledge of the truth. Yes. They're always studying the Bible. They're always studying prophecy. But they never live the truth. It's not in them. I know people that can quote the Bible yes. from cover to cover. But you cannot see it in their lives. Yes. At all. A few more verses and we're done. Verse 8. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these Teachers oppose the truth. Listen what Paul calls them, family. He calls them teachers as well. Because if you lend your ears to them, they will teach you things. Yes. Amen? Yes. They will teach you the ways of this world. And then they are men of depraved minds who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected. Verse 9, we will end with, but they will not get very far because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Listen what Paul is saying here. We must be so alert that it will be clear to us what they're doing. Amen? We must be so in the spirit that if someone stands before you, in the first five minutes of talking, the Lord must show you whose kingdom they are serving. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Amen? Are they here, Lord, 
for your kingdom or are they here for their kingdom? First five minutes. That's how the Spirit of God works. Spirit of discernment. Amen. The gift of discernment. Thank the Lord God Almighty. That is one of the gifts that the Lord has loaned me. And, and, and from the get-go, the person doesn't even have to talk and I can see. Not me, the Lord shows me. It's not about me, family. Yes, it's about every one of us sitting here tonight. And so I want to end by saying this tonight. Family, these past few weeks, the words, the messages that the Lord has given us, they shock. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and, and they cut deep. Yes, and they operate. And, and, and maybe you feel like you're walking around and, and you are injured and you are buckled and, and you know, there's things loose and... and but I want to tell you this, family, if you stick with what the Lord is doing, yes. we are all going to come out the other side and, and, and hear what the Lord says tonight. We are going to rule and reign Thank you. with Him. Amen. Amen. We are going to rule and reign with Him because we are sons and daughters of God, yes. not of the world. Yes. We are servants of God, not of the world. Amen. We are ministers of God. The word, not of the world. Amen. So family, I want to encourage you. If you feel in, injured tonight, you know, for those who've gone in for an op before, maybe two, three, four weeks, maybe a few months after that, you're still a bit sore and cranky. You know, you, you're cranky after an op. So I understand if some of us are cranky because the Lord has been operating. But family, just know this. Just like you recovered from that hurt, and you came out of it, most of us, stronger than what we went in. I can guarantee you, family, stick with what the Lord is doing. He is in a season where He is preparing us to listen to His Holy Spirit and be obedient to His Word. And if we can do that, there's nothing and no one that can come and steal anything from us. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Father God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, that tonight I can stand here even being nothing and no one, Father God. I can at least stand here tonight and I can say the same as what my brother Paul said, that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. For it is my salvation, it's my power, I am not ashamed. I will not only preach it, Lord, but I will live it. And Father, I'm confessing tonight, there simply is no human on this earth. There's no nation. There's no army. There is no force on this earth that will be able to stop a true disciple of Jesus from living the word of God. So we pray, Father God, this tonight. And we humbly ask you as we enter into the throne room of our Father with the next few songs, Lord. We humbly request of you, Father God, that in this week, Lord, for those of us who are walking crooked, who do not yet have that disciple backbone, we pray this week, Lord Jesus, that through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, that you will help us grow one, Lord. That we will stand up straight, that we will be proud, that we are, are, are representing the kingdom of God, that we will be proud to say that I am a son or a daughter of God, that we will be proud to say that I love to live on the truth of the word of God. And I will not compromise. And I will not move left or right. I will not be swayed by the winds and by the waves of this world. I will stand firm on the rock of Jesus Christ, my salvation. So we thank you for that, Father God. We pray, Lord, that as we go into this next worship to you, Father God, that the Spirit of Jesus Christ will clothe us with the armor of God tonight, Lord. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, Lord Jesus, the, the, the shoes of the readiness to spread the gospel, the, the shield of, of faith and the sword, Lord Jesus, which is the word of God. Clothe us tonight, Lord, and protect us. I pray that you will draw up a legion of angels around us 
and hedge us in, Lord Jesus. We pray that the hand of Father God will be over us, that Lord Jesus Christ will remain next to us, and that the Holy Spirit will dwell inside of us, Lord. We thank you for that, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We pray we ask this in Jesus.